Hello. Today we have author Paul Aziz Moore, and we'll be talking about the criminal justice system today on The Bernie Hayes Show. My guest is Paul Aziz Moore, and he has a brand new book out, and uh, we want to talk about it. Paul, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Bernie. Well, tell, tell us about the name of the book. What, what's it about? Uh, well, the name of the book is Black Lives Does Not Matter Revealed. Also, CMS, Genocide, and a Criminal Justice System. Mm -hmm. And what the book is about is uh, basically... Uh, I watch people talk about prison reform. And if there's ever a reason for prison reform, if they knew what was going on in the prison, like what I've witnessed, then they'll have every reason to say this need to be brought to an end. That is, those who care about human lives. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, to make a long story a little bit shorter, uh, the book is about namely genocide on, uh, on United States prisoners. It says understanding the deadly, notorious, genocidal, illegal cap cap capitulation uh, funding scheme. What is that, that about? Well, um, the, the capitulation funding scheme is this, and the genocide is uh, taxpayers put a certain amount of money, uh, pay taxes to see to it that, uh, well, that the state be able to take care of his business. But what happened is money that goes to, uh, to treating uh, prisoners in prisons, certain organizations, medical organizations, take the money and pocket the money and they withhold, they withhold the uh, medical services and just let the uh, prison inmates suffer and die. And, uh, and then this is how uh, one of the ways that, uh, say, people like CMS profits. So CMS, by the way, stands for Corizon Medical Services. And what that is, uh, Corizon Medical Service is a is a is a a medical service that's supposed to provide medical services for prison inmates, uh, and they are being used in different parts of the United States. Mm -hmm. Is this that uh, prison for hire thing? Are they talking about the the pipeline to prison from Tennant Garden to prison? Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what uh, what happens is. Uh, uh, different people uh, put their bids in. Hey, man, we can make you the best deal on uh, offering medical service to prison inmates. And so uh, different organizations put their bid in, and whoever make, uh, win the bid gets, gets to get the contract. Mm -hmm. So how did they, like the COVID-19 pandemic, and tuberculosis and AIDS. How does that affect prisoners? Okay. Uh, I can't really speak too much about COVID-19 because I did not witness that yeah. personally. But the bottom line is this. Uh, in the prison system, a lot of times, too often, too, too many times, the prison system will withhold giving uh, prison inmates adequate medical care. And the reason that they do so is they, they profit. They profit for doing so. So in other words, if they spend money, uh, I, I'll tell you how the Post-Dispatch wrote it up. Uh, they said one nurse that was being there, uh, investigated for a prison, neglect, death, she blurted out, 
we save money because we skip the ambulance and take them right to the morgue. Yeah, I see that's chapter 20, page 23 of your book. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We save money because we skip the ambulance and take them straight to the mark. Wow. There are some that believe that Missourians are insatiably, they have an insatiable appetite for state killings. What does that mean? <laughs> Basically, just, just what they say, uh, what, what the title says. Uh, well, first of all, you spoke about two different things. We save money because we skip the ambulance yeah. and take them right to the morgue. So uh, what happens is prison inmates, this is what I've witnessed over and over and over again. Prison inmates in need of medical care. And the uh, people that's supposed to provide the medical care are saying, we don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know what's wrong with you. And while they're saying this, your medical condition is getting worse and worse. And they, we did this and we did this, but we don't know what's wrong with you. We don't see what's wrong with you. Pretty soon, your medical condition gets so bad that you die. You pass away, huh? Yeah, yeah. you uh, you get so bad, and then when it when you're uh, to the point of no return, then they take you out. Okay, mm -hmm. but if they had got on top of the situation earlier, when they were feigning ignorance, then it would have cost them money. So by them giving you ibuprofen or Tylenol and acting like they don't know what's wrong with you, uh, they save money. Okay. And that's what the capitulation scheme is. Okay. Uh, they, they save money by withholding medical care. Sure. So why did you, why did you write the book? One Paul? of the reasons that I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that, uh, that I wrote the book is because I sit there and witness this. I sit there and witness this uh, year in and year out, day in and day out, week in, week out, month in and month out, year in and year out, even for decades. And uh, as they, you know, it, the, the, the thought came to me, now, Paul, you can be quiet about it or you can tell, them, tell people about what's going on. And, uh, and anybody that care about human suffering, that's the reason. That's the, one of the reasons that I wrote the book mm -hmm. is because I was concerned about the human suffering. And now look at this. It's these people this day, but tomorrow it'll be somebody else. So they, these people are the targets today. Tomorrow you may be the target. And uh, so we can't be turning a blind eye to everything. I have seen organizations like PETA, and they care about the animal. If you saw the human suffering, uh, I done seen people like, oh, they crying and they begging for medical help. They in extreme pain. And, uh, and again, the reason that I wrote the book is because uh, I, I, I hope people bring it to an end. I okay. hope the, certain, the, uh, the people that have the power to do so investigate this and bring this to an end. Will you bring the book to the old who, could, who have the power to make changes? We make sure that they get the book and read, read the reports? What was your question again? Do you, will you get the book to those who can make change? Will you get them to read the book and perhaps make change after they read it? Uh, I've been making every effort to uh, make the book available to those, those uh, organizations and people that need to hear this message. Mm -hmm. Do you think the general public can have an impact on making positive change? Without a doubt, without a doubt, uh, if the general public just knew, uh, when, I, when I started writing this book, uh, I learned about 2.2 .2 million people in America, and uh, that's in the prison system, right? So I say, man, this concerns a lot of people's families and friends and loved ones and everything. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are kind of tied up with their different problems and everything. Okay. Those that have been killed in the prison system, they can't be brought back to life. But I'm hoping uh, that, among other things, some of those people, family members that have, have lost loved ones, 
uh, in the prison system are very well compensated, and they will be okay. if they investigate this. Paul Aziz Moore is my guest, and we're here at the New Life Evangelistic Center for 2428 Woodson Road in Oberlin, Missouri. Reverend Larry Rice has been providing services for those in need for more than 50 years, and we still need your help and support. Back with Paul Aziz Moore after this. This is an opportunity that God has given all of us at this time to work together to reopen 1411 Locust, which is so urgently needed at this community. I thank God for uh, Bernie Hayes and for his support and standing with us all these particular years. Now it's so critical that you and I do our part also, as Bernie's been partnering with us here at, at NLEC TV. We've continued to maintain the faith, continue to move forward, and now the doors have been open. The city of St. Louis has approved our architectural plans. We've been given the go-ahead to make the necessary renovations that are needed. We need some miracles, and that's why I'm asking all of you prayer warriors out there, all of you that are going to use that mustard seed of faith to remove the mountains. There's some mountains, rich and powerful people who move back in the neighborhood, and they don't want 1411 Locust to open. They'd rather leave the people out on the street to slowly die, starved, used, misused, worked over by drug dealers, alcohol, and everything else. We want this place to be a place of hope for those that have lost all hope. And we want to open the doors, and we can do it. As you prayer warriors, go to God in earnest prayer, knocking on the doors of heaven. When he says, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Please continue to pray. Pray that God will just let the, the financial resources come in so we can make all of these repairs. He'll raise up the dedicated labors for the harvest that we will continue to see him do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can even ask or think. Yes, this is a spiritual battle. The principality and powers are fighting from every direction, but greater is he who's in us than he that's in the world. And that's why I'm asking all of you to join us in prayer. Believe God with us. Contact us at New Life Evangelistic Center if you believe that there's people God laid on your heart that we should see. Ask for myself, Larry Rice, or my grandson, Chris Aaron Rice, that we can go visit and share the dream with you and call us at 314-421-3020. Please pray. Get involved now. We need the body of Christ to arise as we work together to reopen this building for the glory of God. Paul Aziz Moore, who wrote a book, it's called, um, it's about genocide. The notorious, deadly, genocidal, illegal capitulation funding scheme and incident against the criminal justice system. It's all about the criminal justice system. It's called Black Lives Does Not Matter, Reveal, CMS, Genocide, and the Criminal Justice System. So, Mr. Aziz, I mean, uh, Paul, um, if the person, how can, first of all, how can they get the book? Uh, well, uh, I put my phone number out there. Okay. Uh, they, can, they can call 314-718-0813, or they can get me at 314 314- Three seven four seven six seven two. Okay, and um, how much does the book cost? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars, and it's, it's quite a large book. What three hundred pages is it? Uh, uh, Four hundred. No, nah, actually, it's uh, yeah, a hundred and one hundred thirteen pages. Yeah, yeah. okay, hundred fourteen. Hundred fourteen. So, and in each one, there's a chapter in here. Do you think that uh, the people who buy this book, especially those you said who lost ones or whose people are incarcerated right now, you think you can mobilize them to do something? And who will they address these problems to? Uh, I can just only hope that they can mobilize people. One of the reasons that I wrote the book, uh, uh, one time I wrote a poem called Black Lives Does Not Matter, right? And then the reason that I, I turned around and wrote the book is because I said people get the wrong idea when they see my poem, Black Lives Does Not Matter. But uh, uh, what the book does is show what I'm talking about. It tells exactly what I mean when I say black lives does not matter. So in other words, these people are being killed in the prison and nobody didn't seem to care. So I, it was written out of my frustration. The poem was written out of my frustration that I was contacting this organization, that organization, this organization, and nobody seemed to really care. And uh, and so... Were you in the system itself? I was. Uh huh. So tell, tell us about your experiences and, and why you think something should be done immediately. 
Yeah. Uh, one of the, what my experience was, uh, after I saw this going on year after year, mm -hmm. people being denied adequate medical care, and they crying and begging for help, and then the next thing you know, we send in a family sympathy cards because the people died. And we know that these people could have been treated. And what happened with me personally, I say, now wait a minute. This same thing took place 10 years ago. You mean to tell me you all ain't came up with no systems that better address these problems? I say, you all are doing this intentionally. And in 2009, I filed a complaint against the Missouri Department of Corrections. And my complaint said that the Missouri Department of Corrections medical service is the equivalent of practicing a subtle form of torture or a conscious or unconscious form of genocide on Missouri prisoners. Once I filed that complaint, I was first in an institution that was close to my home and where my family could come and visit me. Soon as I filed that complaint, four days later, in retaliation for me filing that complaint, I was shipped off to a more severe system, prison system, and uh, I was attacked by the prison system mm -hmm. in retaliation. Okay. So retaliation is very real in the system. It says uh, the Clinton-era laws should be repealed. What does that mean? Uh, uh, Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton. The Clinton, former the President Clinton, Bill Clinton, the Clinton laws that needed to be repealed is, you know, when people are being mistreated, when people are being mistreated, there are laws that are supposed that are put into place to protect you. The prison litigation uh, system that they came up with. Uh, all of these different rules and regulations. First, one of the things that it made it difficult to do is for inmate, prison inmates to sue. So in other words, we got a complaint about, man, the prison is, we're freezing in here. Uh, we can't hardly breathe in here. We're not getting medical, proper medical care. Uh, the guards are racist and they're attacking us. Nobody ain't paying attention, but you can file a complaint, okay? We can file a complaint and then take them to court. But the PLRA, Prison Litigation Reform Act, made it difficult for prison inmates to file complaints because what happens is any money that lawyers can make, all the incentives was taken away. So in other words, whatever effort, whatever work a lawyer put into your case and helping you, the lawyer end up losing. The only way that a lawyer could possibly capitalize uh, on helping your case is that you're dead. But wow. as long as you're alive, the lawyer can't really make no money. So no lawyers didn't want to help you. So whatever problems you was having, you was basically uh, really had to rough it. It made it harder for you to, to to uh, litigate your case. Okay, in court. It, says, it says let inmate justice take its course, meaning what? <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, the sentiments that was expressed by one of the nurses. Okay, so in other words, one nurse was like, hey, what these prisoners are getting, this is what they deserve. This is what they deserve. Let it, let it, let it happen. And so that was the mental attitude that uh, the prison officials had as regards to the treatment of prisoners. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to happen, Paul Aziz Moore? What do I want to happen? Yeah, what do you want to see happen? Uh, one thing that I wanted to be happening is, uh, is that this is investigated and the property authorities look into this and see uh, just is my claims, if they are valid or not which they will find that they are, and then I want something done about it. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Uh, a second thing, uh, I hope there's uh, prison reform because uh, what, what, what takes place is 
the reason that the prison can get away with these things it's because once prisoners are in there, people will be like, man, who cares what happened to prisoners? Who cares what they, you know, let them, nobody don't care nothing about them. But I'm hoping that uh, more attention is, is focused on it because you just never know when you can, uh, the tables are turned and somebody that you really care about may be an assistant. Okay, for those who want to help you, what phone number is going to reach you at? 314-718-0813. Or they can contact me at 314-374-7672. Okay, Paul Aziz Moore is our guest. He's the author of the brand new book. And we'll be coming back with Paul Aziz Moore after this. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC-TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the Work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily. But we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. Today's subject is Emmett Till. The brutal 1955 murder of teenager Emmett Till and the news coverage it drew helped ignite the civil rights movement in America in the 1950s. Exactly what Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American boy, said or did to offend Carolyn Bryant, a 21-year-old white woman working in a Mississippi grocery store that August day, is still unclear. This prompted Bryant's husband, store owner Roy Bryant, and his half-brother, J.W. Milam, to abduct and kill Emmett Till and throw his body in the river. An open casket funeral and news pictures of Emmett Till's disfigured face caused worldwide news coverage of the case in which an all-white jury acquitted the killers. After the trial, Roy Bryant and Milam, now immune from further persecution, confessed the killing to the magazine Look. The case was reopened 50 years later and Emmett Till's body was exhumed by an autopsy. But the FBI announced in 2006 that it would not file federal charges and a grand jury refused to indict in 2007. Emmett Till. So many people are being left on the streets homeless all day long without anywhere to go because downtown St. Louis continues to fight efforts to reopen 1411 Locust. Yes, the downtown neighborhood organization that has continued to fight the New Life Evangelistic Center for the reopening of 1411 Locust and lobbied the Slay administration, the Crudison administration to keep it closed and close it down must be strongly resisted at this particular time. We have a new mayor. I believe she cares about the homeless. Tashara Jones needs our support. If you'll join me in prayer over this, if you'll join me in resisting these special interest groups, if you want to believe the time for action is now, please contact me. I'm Larry Rice at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, at 63166. You can call me at 314-421-3020. I thank God for faithful viewers of Bernie Hayes, and now the time for action has come. Welcome back. My guest is author Paul Aziz Moore. He has a brand new book out about the prison system, and uh, he wants to prison reform. And uh, Paul, once again, uh, you told me that the AP Associated Press investigated this uh, situation in the prison, about prison reform? Okay, so uh, in 2009, I was being attacked by the prison system, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was in complete turmoil, and I was begging for help from anybody who I possibly can get it. And I told the, I contacted the Associated Press, and I begged them, please help me, please help me, please help me. And finally, I told them, I said, look, all of these people that are being killed, they're saying they're dying of natural causes, dying of natural causes. These people are not dying of natural causes. These people are being killed in the prison. And the Associated Press, I say it was uh, 27 in, uh, negligent deaths in in uh, uh, 
1997, but by 2009, there was 600 wrongful death lawsuits. I say, they keep saying it was died of natural cause, died of natural cause, but a lot of people, these people were not dead because of natural cause, mm -hmm. they were killed. So the Associated Press say, look, Mr. Nor uh, uh, Mr. Aziz, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, investigate this and get back with you and let you know what we find out. And after they investigated it, this is what they found out. They say, look, uh, we investigated this, and one of the things that we found out is when a bunch of old people die of natural causes, we expect this, but we found out that a lot of these people are young people, and there's something wrong with that picture. So did they, did they, did they do anything about the report? I mean, did anybody act upon it? Did anybody do anything, making changes? They was limited in what they can do. Mm -hmm. All they can do, all they can do is say, hey, "Man, look, this is what we found out. There's something wrong with that picture." Okay, are you mobilizing people now to 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 take efforts to make things better? How can they reach you, and what can they do? I'm doing my best to get this message out to people and let them know what's going on, and they can reach me at three one four area code. And my phone number is 718-0813, or they can get me at 314, area code, the phone number 374-7672. Okay. Paul, uh, uh, I really sympathize with what you've gone through, and uh, but you could have come out and, and just say, hey, I'm, I'm free now, I'm going to let it go, not do anything about it. Well, what's still motivating you? Well, why are you still trying to make these reforms? because I think people need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing, and I'm hoping that changes are made. Okay. Do you think that the power of the people, if they address the, the situation, can help? And who, who would they talk to? Who would they try to make the changes from? Who who make the reforms? <laughs> well, since it's, since it's genocide, I hope the, uh, 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 the proper... Uh, officials investigate this because it's, that's against the law. Well, I'm asking who are the proper officials? Well, uh, one, I done contacted the St. Louis County uh, Prosecuting Attorney's Office, uh, uh, FBI, whoever, whoever is the uh, proper officials. I can't say who would uh, be definitely involved in this, but I've already consultated, uh, contacted the prosecuting attorney's office in St. Louis County. Okay, so you need people to, to join you in this effort and find out exactly what roadmap y'all could take to, to make changes. Once again, tell me your phone number and how they My can. My phone number is 314-718-0813, and they can also contact me at 314-374-7672. So you, you're not afraid to go up against uh, the, these prosecutors and, and judges and other folks in the system? We are. We have about half a minute. <laughs> uh, you, in this life, we, we got to do what we got to do. Okay, I guess. Paul, okay, once again, what's the name of the book? Black Lives Does Not Matter Revealed. Also, CMS, Genocide, and the Criminal Justice System. Paul Aziz Moore. I want to thank you, Paul, for coming. And perhaps after people watch this and view this, maybe they can contact you and you get a mobilization together and, uh, and some reform may come about. Thanks so much for being my guest. And good thank luck you. to you. Thank you for having me, Bernie. Good luck. Good luck to you, too. Hi. And don't forget now, everybody, support the New Life Evangelist, etc. We're 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, 63114. You know, food, water, anything, clothing, can help. We need your help and support. And if you have not got your box shots, please get vaccinated. Stay safe. See you next time.